Oftentimes when you think of a Land Rover, the iconic Range Rover quickly comes to mind. However, about 13 years ago, Land Rover had another iconic name here in the States. And for 2017, the Discovery is back. And this week, Land Rover has loaned me the latest 2017 version. So is this all new fifth generation worthy of the Disco name? That's what we're here to find out. As I said earlier, it's been quite a while since we saw the Discovery name here in the States. Now, some of you may think that it's been gone for all those years. However, Land Rover just simply renamed it the LR3 and then the LR4 back in 2009. However, uh, Land Rover doesn't really redesign their vehicles quite so often. In fact, uh, in the like 28 years that the Discovery has been in the States, uh, they've only redesigned it about four times. This is the all new fifth generation model. And it's based on the all new aluminum intensive Range Rover platform that honestly has been around uh, for the last couple of years here in the States. Now you can see the design of this all new Discovery certainly doesn't look at all like the old LR4 or LR3, whereas that one had a much more traditional boxy shape um, that definitely was looking pretty old, especially with a lot of these sleek crossovers that have come to the market. Now you can see the front end has a very, very upscale premium appearance. I especially love the full LED headlights that my tester has with a signature LED daytime running lights and they have automatic high beams. Uh, the entire look just looks expensive. I can't tell you how many times I've had people stare at this thing since literally it just went on sale in the US in June of 2017. Now my tester uh, is in an optional color um, that's about $1,500. This is actually a silver color, uh, but to me it looks a little bit more gray. It looks really good with the black contrasting roof and the satin finish 21 inch wheels, which just make this thing look immensely capable. It seriously stands out in a sea of very vanilla uh, crossovers, even in the luxury segment. Now, uh, my tester, obviously, as I said, is the HSE Luxury. Uh, there are actually four trims at launch. There's the SE, HSE, HSE Luxury, and the first edition model, which is gonna be like a limited edition. That one basically comes fully equipped. Now you can see these 21 inch wheels are optional as part of a design package. It's like 4,500 bucks. They look fantastic. They're wrapped in 275 series rubber, really fat tires, of course. And then with the HSE Luxury, you get a fully adjustable air suspension, which can seriously raise and lower the Discovery uh, by as like, much is like five inches, um, whereas when you have it in its off-road mode, it'll actually have just over 11 inches of ground clearance. So because this is a Land Rover, it's still very capable off-road, even though some of you may be hesitant to take your you know, $60,000 plus luxury SUV off-road, just you, you'll have peace of mind knowing that it's a Land Rover and it can do that if you choose to do so. Now, looking at the rear of the vehicle, again, it doesn't have the traditional Land Rover Discovery styling elements. Um, the taillights have been fully redesigned. Uh, they're full LEDs. Uh, they wrap around as opposed to the vertical stacked ones that the old LR4 had. However, if you look, if you squint, you'll see a couple of traditional Discovery design elements. I love the slightly raised roof that is so subtle, you honestly have to stare at it. My tester has the contrasting black roof with the panoramic glass and it has the black side rails. That's optional, of course. And then also, you're also gonna notice the, the rear license plate is also slightly offset. Um, that's also another traditional Discovery element. I think it looks fantastic. Now, some of you have said it kind of reminds you of a Ford Explorer. I need to remind you guys that this has nothing to do with any Ford platform. This is a entirely Land Rover platform. And sure, it does have some styling elements of the Kirk current Explorer if you stare at it from the front. However, I see what I see is mostly a modern interpretation of Discovery. It seriously stands out. It looks premium. It's very masculine. So if you're looking for something like that in this segment, which tends to be a lot more feminine, uh, you're going to want to put the new Discovery at the top of your list. Now, what does this compete with? It's a large luxury SUV with a third row seat. So it competes head on with vehicles like the Audi Q7, um, the Acura MDX, the Mercedes GLE or the GLS. So in that class of vehicle, I think the Land Rover definitely stands out. It has that British charm that you come 
to know and expect from the Land Rover brand. But enough about the exterior. Let's take a look at the inside and see how Land Rover has changed this vehicle over the years. When you first approach your Discovery, you're going to notice, obviously, my tester has this smart key access system with push button start. You get that on the HSE and up trims. Um, so I recommend going for that trim. Here's the current Land Rover key fob. It looks pretty nice, feels good in your hands. You can see there's lots of buttons here. Um, you can obviously open the tailgate. Uh, you can also raise and lower the vehicle from the air suspension by pushing like the lock and unlock button simultaneously with like the headlight button. Um, so that's a nice convenient feature. I didn't find remote start though, so I may have to double check to see if that's a dealer accessory if you want that. But nevertheless, just keep the key fob in your pocket. To lock the door, just touch your finger on this little indentation portion. That locks the door for you, and then if you have the mirrors to set, they'll electrically fold. To unlock it, there's a sensor in the back of the handle. Just touch the back, and that will unlock all the doors for you if you have it set to do that. Now, looking at the interior of the latest Discover, you can see it takes a lot of the current design themes that you see in the new Range Rover, which is a really nice interior. I mean, Land Rovers uh, are known for having high-quality interiors. I love the seats. I love this, like, basically adjustable pillow that you get on the headrest on both front seats. Or the seats themselves, this is the up-level leather that you get on the HSE. My tester is missing, like, a luxury seating package that gives you massaging seats and ventilated uh, second and third row seats. So these are just heated. Uh, but nonetheless, they're very nice. They're 16 way adjustable and you get a three person memory on the driver's side. So that's definitely uh, really nice. Now I have it kind of in its um, normal height here. So you can raise and lower this. The access height is going to be obviously the easiest to get in and out of. But in normal height here, it's not hard to get in and out of. I mean, the Land Rover brand in general, every time I drive one of these, I feel like they sit up higher than most of their competitors. It's one of the reasons why people like Land Rover so much. Now when you shut the door, it sounds nice and solid. I wasn't expecting anything less. This is an all new, you know, platform off the Range Rover. Now to start the vehicle up, just put the foot on the brake and then push this button here to fire up the engine. You can see the gauges do a nice sweep and they're actually more of the traditional analog um, speedometer and tachometer with an LCD display. Um, the Discovery doesn't offer the full LCD display you get in the Range Rover Sport or the Big Daddy Range Rover, which is fine with me. I like the gauges. They're very Jaguar-esque. They look you know, very similar. Of course, Jaguar and Land Rover, same brand, so you're gonna see some corporate parts sharing here. Now looking at the rest of this interior, you can see my up-level tester certainly has a lot of high quality materials. This is even nicer than what I experienced in the Jaguar F-Pace that I had uh, last year, but you can see here very nice leather stitching on the dashboard here It's all soft touch right here with more stitching on the upper portion uh, And everything in here looks expensive. I mean, there's real aluminum trim. There's some nice carbon fiber material right there The piano black plastic I'm not necessarily a fan of just because it shows fingerprints really easily and dust um, And I'm also noticing that the storage is a little bit limited in this car I mean you can fold this back here and get you know big cup holders. There's a couple of storage bins right here But uh, some competitors like the MDX for example uh, give you a little bit more in terms of storage space. Now looking at the door panels here, you can see your window controls are up here. Uh, it's nice and leather padded here where I'm going to rest my elbows. There's another portion down here that's padded where you're also going to rest your elbows. And it has a nice little pocket here where you can put your phone. Your window lock controls are your um, door lock controls are there and then your memory seat controls are there. The windows are one touch automatic for all four. Expected that for a vehicle in this price. The steering wheel, it's basically the same steering wheel off of a Range Rover except the fact that instead of Range Rover, it'll say Discovery, which is interesting to me, most manufacturers put the actual, you know, emblem of the manufacturer, like Land Rover, in the center, but it's nice that Land Rover actually does, you know, goes by the model more to give it a little bit more of a distinction. Uh, the steering wheel controls here, they all are big buttons. Uh, they feel really nice. There's a heated steering wheel on my tester. There's aluminum paddle shifter. This is part of the design package that my tester has. And the steering wheel, of course, is power tilt telescoping with the control being on the uh, right side here, which is, you know, opposite of what most manufacturers actually do. Now, looking at the center stack here, it's pretty simple to be honest. I mean you have three dials here for your climate controls. Dual, or it's three zone automatic. If I had that climate luxury package it'll be four zone. Um, and then if you wanted to access your heated seat controls you push this and again that's how you turn on the heated seat. If I had cooled seats I would turn this way and it would actually light up that in blue. But again my tester doesn't have it. Uh, my tester because it's an HSE Lux has the InTouch Pro 10.2 inch system. Now I've showed you guys the system before in other Jaguar Land Rover products. They've definitely been working on beefing up the speed. The graphics are pretty impressive. I mean when you look at the map display here, you can see here the map looks pretty nice. I mean, this is definitely on par with what you're going to find in a lot of luxury brands for sure. Um, and it, I also think it's a really nice size screen, although it's not quite as good as the Google Earth display that you get with the Audis and stuff. But um, when you go to here, this is your media sources there. Um, you know, everything is pretty.
pretty well laid out, to be honest. I like the presets that, you know, they put down here. And the touch response is quick enough. Um, the buttons are also large enough to where I can easily find them. Uh, I really like the fact that, you know, when you store favorites, um, they're kind of, you know, you kind of push it with that little star there and it will automatically just put it right, you know, in a list here where you can kind of just cycle through throughout and such. Your phone control is obviously right there. Go to the home screen here. It takes you back to this with the four quadrants. You have your, you know, audio, climate, navigation, and then phone. You slide over here. You can see there's lots of different apps. My tester has a $2,200 rear entertainment system, which I'll show you guys when we get to the rear. Eco data here that shows you how efficiently you're driving the car or how inefficiently you're driving it. Um, there's a back button right there. Um, you can also change, you know, that's to access your heated seat controls. There's also a 4G LTE hotspot in here. Well, actually, this car only has 3G, so it's a little bit behind the times, but it does have a wireless hotspot if you guys want to use that. It's just going to be very slow. There's also a valet mode that'll lock this out if you guys are going to actually valet this car. And you can also access your cameras. My tester has the 360 camera system um, and it also has automatic parallel parking so it's really nice especially considering how large this vehicle is to have you know a feature like that to access the automatic parallel parking you just push this button here it'll automatically just look for a parking spot you know depending on you know where you're actually you know, pointing the vehicle to see where you're gonna have it parked for you and it's really nice it works pretty well it's relatively quick when I when I tried to use it um, but overall you know going back to the home screen here there's so many things that you can choose I, I do want to show you guys one feature about Land Rovers um, and that's the 4x4i um, feature that's actually really really nice especially if you guys are off-roading low traction launch is basically you know if you're on a slippery service this will help get you out of the you know out of this slippery service drive assist is going to show you your cameras here uh, especially if you're trying to park this car it's definitely nice to see the curb views the front view so you don't scrape your wheels which are which are large 22 inch wheels I'm um, going back here to off-road information you can see this is really useful if you guys are off-roading it'll show you your wheel artic articulation which of the center or rear diffs are locked um, you can also go here and it'll show you, you know, what kind of angle the vehicle is on. Uh, a compass is right there. I mean, this is a really cool system and it's something that stands apart in this segment. And it really reminds you that Land Rover is known for offering, you know, vehicles like this that are off-road capable. Uh, ambient lighting, that changes the color of your interior lighting at night, which is nice. That's part of the HSE Lux package or trim, trim level. So again, I have it on the racing red, but you can, just, you know, choose between five different colors. I mean, overall, there's lots of customization here. Um, the touch response is decent. I did find that occasionally the system would be a little slow to respond when I would touch and it would kind of think for a second. So again, this is like a computer. You're going to have to be patient for it from time to time when you're using it. Now, looking at the rest of the center stack here, obviously rotary dial selector, that's a Jaguar Land Rover thing. It rises up and down when you start the car up. Put it into reverse here. You can see there's the backup camera. They've definitely beefed up the graphics. The last Range Rover that I showed you had really crappy um, displays for the graphics for the maps for the backup camera and this looks a lot better it's got parking sensors you know all around of course which is what you kind of expect um, the transmission controller here the dial I find it to be rather easy to use although I wish it had a little bit more of a different feel between the different modes uh, and there are times where I often forgot thought I was in park but I was really just in reverse and then when you open the door it doesn't actually go to park so I think that's something they need to work on uh, for a safety thing uh, over here you can see here this is your terrain response system my tester has the terrain response too most of the times I have it an automatic which is accessed just by pushing down but when you push up on it or it rises up you can choose between all these different modes right here which it'll show you in your display there's a grass gravel snow there's a mud ruts there's a sand mode and then there's a rock crawl mode and this is where you access the low range transfer case um, this this car is one of the few vehicles in the segment that offers a low range transfer case that's an optional uh, package if you guys want that low range it also has downhill assist control now uh, this button here obviously controls your air suspension right now I have it in it's normal setting you know push up here it'll go to an off-road height which you can literally watch as the vehicle rises the rear end first and then it rises the front end and this is where you're gonna have like 11 inches of ground clearance so it's definitely really cool and you can actually drive around in off-road mode until about 50 miles an hour where it will go back down to normal height access mode uh, is basically locked out once you go past 20 miles an hour because it's basically riding on the bump stops and it makes for an uncomfortable ride uh, here's your electronic parking brake here um, this is also controls the automatic start stop function it works relatively seamless although it's like 100 degrees today so I actually had it off most of the times it restarts pretty well uh, this armrest here is nice and padded there's also separate armrests here so you don't have to worry about you know 
people's armrest being on this if you're trying to access this. It has two levels of storage here, uh, which is nice. And if my tester has an optional refrigerator, which sometimes it can be a pain to open this, but uh, you can see here, I actually have it on. It's pretty deep. You can actually put water bottles, four of them in here. And when you put your hand in there, it stays pretty cold. So if you put like a cold water bottle in here and leave the car on, uh, it'll actually keep your drinks uh, cold pretty well, which is definitely a nice feature to have. It's also slightly sealed here, so you can actually keep it cold on those long trips. I found this car to be a really comfortable uh, vehicle on longer trips. Love the seats, wish they had the massage function, but the leather is really supple and everything feels really nice in here. Now up above, my tester has the panoramic sunroof, which is, you know, it opens only on this side and then it does not open there, but it does let in some nice light. Um, and then overall over here, you can see there's a little, there's more controls for the sunroof. There's no sunglass holder here. This, this panel here is kind of useless. I kind of wish they made this a sunglass holder, but I uh, really like the rearview mirror. It's a nice pillarless design. And I think the interior definitely stands out uh, and it definitely has that unique British charm. Although I did find the Audi's interior to be slightly more intuitive. I prefer the Google Map interface in the Q7, but uh, this is definitely a really nice place to spend time and it definitely feels like uh, you spent well over $60,000 on a vehicle like this. With a vehicle this large, you're probably wondering how is the second row in this car? And you know, the Discovery comes with this, with five passenger seating as standard. My tester being the Lux trim has the um, third row as standard. And you can see here, there's lots of space in the second row. The second row itself is actually power adjustable, which you can you know adjust the uh, the the recline of this from like this, this little button here, but getting in there's a nice little handle here to help you get in Which is nice because this vehicle is pretty high, but when you get in here and then shut the door It sounds nice and solid and this is pretty much almost as comfortable as the front seats So this is a really really nice place to spend time Land Rover gives you a nice armrest here with dual cup holders the seats themselves They fold down 60 40 and then you have you know dual map pockets here with a little bit of more storage Surprisingly, there's no rear privacy manual shade here, which is uh, kind of a silly omission. I think they should have included that. More storage down here. It's all soft touch leather, aluminum. Um, so that's really where it counts. There's also rear seat vents on the side there, which are over here, but you can see, you know, there are heated rear seats. If you guys wanna, you know, turn on your heated rear seats, you can get cooled rear seats as well if you get that luxury package. Tri-zone climate control. There's uh, two USB ports down here, an HDMI port, and then more USB ports down here. This remote control obviously uh, is for the rear seat entertainment system, which is 2,200 bucks. It basically mimics the interface that's on the front. So you just use this controller here and you can kind of choose what you want to do. I'm surprised it's not a touch screen. I think Land Rover should have just made it a touch screen like the front, um, but uh, the car, the company does give you, you know, two wireless headphone jacks here. So you can kind of plug in something here or you can watch the nav system here or plug in your own media uh, that's downloaded into the car. So, I mean, this is really the ultimate family road trip vehicle gonna make a lot of you know families who can afford this car very happy on those long trips. Now accessing the third row in the Discovery uh, is not quite as easy as I would like it to be. I mean you can actually fold down the third row from here or I'll show you in the rear but what I found to access the third row you first have to push this button here. That will actually move the front seat forward. Same with the driver's side it'll slide this forward but it doesn't actually move the seat up. You actually have to manually pull this lever here and then the seat will slide forward manually and that will kind of give you some space to get to the third row which um, this is my first time actually getting into the third row. Now Land Rover says the third row in this car is adult friendly. So let's find out if that's the case. I'm going to get back here, put this seat back here and you can see it comes back electrically. And I have to say, aside from you know, this is being reclined a little too much. There's decent legroom back here. There's good foot space underneath the seats here. And honestly, you know, for two people back here, I could sit back here comfortably being five foot seven for like an hour road trip if I needed to. One thing that really helps this panoramic roof here, it lets in a lot of light uh, and the vehicle because it's so, you know, tall, there's lots of headroom here uh, and you have a really decent view. Now the materials back here are hard touch plastic, which is a little disappointing, but there's some nice plush carpeting. Uh, but overall you could actually put, you know, seven people, this is more space than that Audi Q7 and an MDX that I last tested um, earlier this year. Now my tester also has the foot activated uh, tailgate. If you just stick your foot under here with the key fob, it'll actually open the tailgate for you. And you can see here with the third row up, there isn't really much cargo space. Now one thing about this car is I really like this power partition here that kind of blocks stuff from hitting the back. You can kind of raise and lower it by pushing this button here, it'll lower this. Now this is actually something you can sit on. Uh, Land Rover says about 440 pounds is the max weight it'll hold. 
Uh, so if you're really fat, you probably shouldn't sit on this. You might break it, but it's definitely nice to have, you know, as a tailgating vehicle. Now you can see with the rear seat, the third row up, there isn't much cargo space. In fact, I was having trouble finding the actual numbers. This look to me looks like around 12 cubic feet of space, which is on par with a lot of its competitors who have a third row. Now to fold down this row of vehicle, uh, this third row, it's pretty simple. Just push this button here, just push it once, and then it'll kind of move the front seats up a little bit. So you can actually fold down the third row. And then when you fold down the third row, uh, it's a really nice flat floor. And that's that's really nice. Um, the second row again will come slightly back. Uh, I think you're looking at around 45-ish cubic feet of space with the third row down, which is plentiful to be honest. Uh, and if you want, you can also lower the rear of this vehicle to kind of help you you know, get in and out. You can see I just push this button here and the car is starting to lower, which is nice because I'm really short and I found the load floor height to be very, very high when I had it in its off-road mode here. But as you can see here, just push and hold this button here. The suspension lowers all the way down to the access mode, which I'll show you guys really quick. You can see it's practically on the bump stops, but this is a lot easier to get in and out of. Now you can also fold the second row from here. Just push this button here. That automatically lowers the headrest and it honestly, Land Rover couldn't have made it any simpler. This is really nice. Now when you fold down the second row of seats, you're going to get around 82 cubic feet of space uh, and I have my backpack over there so it actually could sense that there's something there and it, that's why it stopped but it's really really a practical vehicle and it has about the same amount of cargo space as what you get in an MDX and the Q7 so that's really nice. Now in case you guys are wondering what's going on under the floor here there is a jack here uh, and there's a temporary spare that's like somewhere buried underneath here it might be actually be under the car. Land Rover has the option of a full-size spare which my tester looks like actually has if you guys want the full-size spare this is one of the few brands that actually offers that full-size spare. the newest discovery, Land Rover actually is offering two engines at launch. Uh, this will probably be the more popular choice. This is the gas engine option. Uh, both are actually three liter super or three liter V6 motors. This is the supercharged gas engine that we all know and love in the current crop of Land Rover products. It's basically the company's V8 with two cylinders lopped off. But in this application, it's supercharged. It makes 340 horsepower and 332 pound feet of torque, which is 40 less than that Range Rover uh, Big Daddy uh, SUV that I showed you guys a couple of years ago. Now, uh, this vehicle lost a lot of weight in the redesign because it's now aluminum intensive. Land Rover says they dropped a thousand pounds off the curb weight. So the old one was close to 6,000 pounds. This one is just under 5,000 pounds. So again, it's still heavy, but it weighs about as much as the uh, Audi Q7 that I had a couple of weeks ago. Now it's paired with an eight speed automatic transmission. And of course, four wheel drive comes standard. The low range with the train response too is optional that my tester has. Now fuel economy is not really that terrific to be honest. It's rated at 16 city, 21 highway on premium gas. Of course, if you guys want more fuel economy, go for the diesel. That actually is a turbo diesel that's in the new Range Rover as well. That makes 254 horsepower, but 443 pound of torque, and it's rated at 2126, which is better, about on par with the gas engine options like some of its competitors. But uh, what this car does have is very strong towing capacity. This car will tow about 8,200 pounds with the supercharged V6, the gas motor, 77 if you go for the diesel. Um, but paired with that eight-speed automatic built by ZF, let's take a look and see how it works out on the road. So it's been a while since I drove a Discovery in general, or an LR3 or an LR4, and I have to say, the current Range Rover really impressed me the last time I drove that car. And with the Discovery now riding on that same platform, everything that I love about the Range Rover has basically been transported transported into the Discovery. You can immediately feel the, you know, the lightweight aluminum intensive chassis. Now, of course, this is still a pretty heavy vehicle at over almost 5,000 pounds, but um, the Discovery hides its weight well, just like the Big Daddy Range Rover and Range Rover Sport. Uh, the steering in this car is electric power steering assist, um, and it definitely is not, you know, a sports sedan quick like the Range Rover Sport, but you'd be surprised at how well this big 5,000 pound seven seat SUV hustles down the road. Now, one thing I'm noticing immediately is the engine in this car. That supercharged V6 is basically the perfect partner for this motor. Uh, it moves out the truck smartly. Now, Land Rover says the zero to 60 is like 6.9 seconds, which to me feels a little conservative. When I floor it from a stop, <laughs> I 
It definitely feels like in that six second range, maybe even six and a half on a good day. The suspension definitely is pretty soft. Um, when you you know floor it, you can hold, you can feel the car basically buck down, and the weight shifts rearward. And then when you slam on the brakes, the whole you know sh weight shifts forward. This is this feels like a real SUV truck platform to me, even though it's not. But it definitely has the you know the body motions of something that's not sporty. In fact, Land Rover doesn't even give you a really a dynamic mode like you get in the Range Rover or the Range Rover Sport, which honestly I don't really miss it in this car. This is a family, you know, luxury SUV that's very comfortable. I mean, the air suspension in this car makes the ride so nice. Even on these 22 inch wheels, it glides over the crappy road imperfections. And when you take it off-roading, which I did some light, light off-roading and some gravel road um, earlier this week, you don't even feel it. You literally feel like you're on pavement, to be honest, because the suspension just soaks up the bumps really nicely. Um, and it's just a really nice place to spend time. And this car is really quiet. I mean, you expected it to be quiet. This is a you know $60,000 plus SUV. Uh, the wind noise is very hushed. Road noise is very hushed. You do hear a little bit of that supercharger whine, which is nice when you put your foot into it. Um, I haven't driven the diesel version of this car, which I imagine actually Land Rover says is a little bit slower. So uh, if you guys you know want a little bit more speed, I recommend going for the gas model. Now, the visibility in here is excellent also. Very large side mirrors. My tester has uh, blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert. Uh, very huge windshield. In, in fact, you can feel the raised roof because there's so much headroom in here. Uh, the windshield is gigantic. You can see basically everything. You have a very nice commanding view of the road. That's something that I've always associated with Land Rover products. Even in the normal height setting, I feel like I'm sitting up higher than everybody else. And the seats, oh my God, they just feel like seats for a king. They're so comfortable, so supportive. I would have loved to try them out in the massaging seats, but honestly, I could just, you know, deal with this. This is really nice. Do miss the cooled function, especially in this, you know, hot summer day. But uh, the view out of the back also is great. I mean, this is more of a traditional shape, even though it does look a lot more modern, but visibility in here is excellent all around. Honestly, this car shrinks. I mean, it's 195 inches long, but it doesn't feel that big from behind the wheel, just like the Big Daddy Range Rover. It's a really easy car to drive, you know, once you get used to, you know, how large this car is. In fact, it's just such a it's such a nice car. Long road trips on this car, they're just forgotten about. You don't even feel how long it actually takes to go on drives because you're just so comfortable, you feel so safe, so secure, and you have plenty of power uh, from that supercharged V6. Now my tester also has the full suite of driver assistance tech, um, which is nice because this car basically will come to a full stop in traffic for you, which it's doing right now. Uh, and it also has, you know, traffic sign recognition, has automatic emergency braking, active lane keep assist. I did find the active lane keep assist in this car to be pretty intrusive. Um, there are times where I signaled, I tried to turn the wheel to actually change lanes and it was still fighting me to kind of keep the, you know, keep the car in the lane. So I kind of had to just shove it over. Uh, if you want, you can turn that off. Uh, my tester also has the automatic start stop, which you're noticing here. It's pretty seamless. When it shuts off, just touch the accelerator. This car will basically just kind of accelerate for you on its own whenever the traffic clears or you know if you want to hit the brakes it'll cancel the cruise control entirely so this car has the full suite of driver assistance stuff very nice to have especially when you're stuck in you know the big city like i am where there's a lot of crappy traffic And again, once you get it going, you can feel that supercharger and there's so much torque. It just kind of shoves you back into the seat. Uh, and it's just a really nice car to drive on a long trip, but getting up to highway speeds here, as you can see, great commanding view of the road, really comfortable seats, really nice steering. It's just a really nice car, honestly. I'm, I'm pretty thrilled with this car. In fact, comparing it to the Audi Q7 is tough because I love the Q7, but I also like the more masculine appeal of this car. I like the off-road capability. Uh, even though the Audi was slightly quicker, zero to 60, this still feels to me plenty fast. And I just, I prefer the looks and the way this car feels, to be honest. This is more of a, a car that appeals to my taste if I actually needed a luxury family SUV. Now let's talk a little bit about the fuel economy because as I said earlier, this car is a little bit thirstier than some of its competitors. And I've actually been averaging around 16 miles per gallon in my mixed city and highway driving, which is actually bang on with the EPA's targets. It's about a few MPG less than what I got in the Audi or some of the competitors. On the highway, I did get it up to about 22 miles per gallon. So this is where it really is guzzling gas compared to its competitors. A lot of those competitors can get upwards of 25 plus MPG if you're really, you know, light on the gas. I imagine just go for the diesel, but you're going to sacrifice some speed if you guys want a little bit better gas mileage, but that's not typically why you buy a Land Rover product. Now, the price of the new Discovery, that's another area let's talk about. This car starts at just under $50,000, $49,990. That's the same starting price as the new Audi Q7, and it's about five grand more than an MDX, but it is cheaper by a couple grand than the Mercedes GLE, GLE the BMW X5. 
uh, and some of those other competitors like that. This is a lot cheaper than an Escalade as well, and personally, I think it's a lot nicer than an Escalade. Uh, my tester is the HSE Lux. Uh, from there, from the base SE, you don't really want that. It has halogen headlights. You go to the HSE, it has the LED headlights with the Harman Kardon sound, the upgraded 10-inch display. It's about $7,000 extra to go to the HSE. It's also about $6,000 extra if you want the diesel. That seems a little bit steep. I'm not sure how you're gonna make that money back, how long it'll take you when you actually own that car. Now, my tester being the HSE Lux is also another 7,000 on top of the HSE. It starts at around 64 grand, which honestly is not that expensive considering what you get. Now, my tester is filled with a buttload of options, honestly. Um, the most expensive one is the design package that gives you the 21 inch wheels, all the black trim, the black contrasting roof, the black finished grill. That's almost five grand, it's like 4,500. The color of my silver color is like 1,500. That's kind of expensive, honestly. I'd probably skip the color. Um, my tester has like a driver pro package that gives you the adaptive cruise. It's got the head up display. It's got the roof rails, upgraded four wheel drive system for like another 1,500 bucks. I mean, there are so many options that Land Rover has on this car that it's ballooned the price of my tester to just over $82,000, which again, <laughs> A lot of money. Does it feel $82,000? Yes. I mean, when I drive this car, I feel like it's a car that's worth easily, you know, over the $75,000 range. It's still cheaper than the latest Escalade that I had, which was like $94,000. So I'd rather have personally have this over than Escalade, to be honest, if I was going to go for a luxury SUV. But just know that if you guys can afford a vehicle like this, um, you're going to pretty much be dealing with, you know, a lot of competitors and the Land Rover definitely stands out in a segment full of them. I mean, if you guys remember the Audi that I had, the Q7 was around 77,000. So this to me feels a little bit nicer than the Audi just because it, is, it appeals to me personally, but just make sure you guys test drive all of its competitors if you guys are actually seriously looking for a vehicle in this segment. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2017 Land Rover Discovery HSE Lux. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.